Scroll views can be helpful for creating tutorials. In the upcoming example, we're going to create a tutorial for our pet photo sharing app. To walk users through the process of using this app, we'll have users swipe between each step in the tutorial using our scroll view. Here's how it works. The starter project for the video has two view controllers set up in the storyboard. The tutorial view controller has a full screen scroll view that will hold however number of pages we need in this tutorial. The tutorial step view controller represents a single page in this tutorial. There are properties to set the background image, foreground image, and label text. In the demo, we're going to instantiate multiple instances of this tutorial step view controller and add them to the tutorial view controller in our scroll view. And here's how we'll lay out the pages inside of our scroll view. The scroll view width and height are known values, so we need to do is set up each page view to be the same width and height to fill exactly on one screen of the scroll view. In the demo, we'll use auto layout to set the size and position of the pages to be side by side. Since we're using auto layout, the scroll view will know the size and position of each page sub view and know its total content size. If you're laying out things manually, you might need to calculate the total content size yourself and then set the scroll view's content size manually. That will get you a scroll view with the correct content, but when you run the app, you'll still be able to scroll anywhere, so maybe on maybe one half of the page is visible to another half of the page. To get the scroll view to lock on page boundaries, all you need to do is select the Paging Enabled checkbox in Interface Builder or in Code, or you just need to set the Paging Enabled property on the scroll view to true. Okay, enough theory, let's dive into it. Okay, we're gonna to get to the business of adding paging to our scroll views. And as you can see, I have a sample project already set up. And we have some boilerplate code in place. First, right up here, you can see we get an, we have an outlet to our scroll view. Next, we have this method create and add tutorial step. Each tutorial step is just a view controller. So essentially, this method goes through the process of initializing a view controller, adding the correct images, and then returning that view controller back. And you can see here in our image assets that these are the images that we're going to be adding. Now, in the tutorial step view controller, this just contains some text as well as an image to display to the user. What we want to do now is get some view controllers and lay them out side by side so that the user can scroll between them. And we're going to do this within the tutorial view controller. So the very first thing we'll do in view did load is create our pages. And I'm going to close these panes just to give us a bunch of room. And again, we're calling this method create and add tutorial step. We're going to pass in a background image name, and this is just BG1, an icon name, which is just icon1, and some text. The text doesn't really matter so much, but we'll add some stock text. Okay, so that's page one. Now I'm gonna copy this four times. This gives us five different view controllers. And I'll add some copy for each of these. Okay, so now that we have our five view controllers, what I'd like to do next is store them in array. So I'll just create a new array, and this array will contain tutorial steps view controllers like so. And then what we'll do is simply add them to the array. Now that we have our view controllers, we now need to set up the constraints between them. So I'm gonna create a dictionary, and we're gonna call this views, and this will contain a string as well as a UI view. And this is helpful when setting up our constraints programmatically.
Now I'm going to set up my vertical constraints. With my vertical constraints set up, we'll set up our horizontal constraints. Now that I have my constraints defined for my vertical and horizontal, I now need to activate them. And I simply call NS layout constraint, activate, and then I pass in my array of constraints. And since both vertical constraints and horizontal constraints are arrays, we can simply add them together. If adding constraints is confusing, definitely check out our course on auto layout. I'm just going to fix that right there. And now let's build and run. Typically, when you see an exception like this, this means I mistyped a constraint. I'm going to stop, head back over here. And it looks like I put in exclamation mark where a pipe should have been. Let's build and run again. And here is our view controllers. Now, as you can see, I'm able to scroll between them. And essentially, these view controllers are all laid out side by side. Now, there is one problem here is that we want the users to simply move like we don't we want them to move between one view controller at a time. So we need to enable paging. We don't want the, the user to sort of go right here and stop. So to do that, I'm going to set is paging enabled to true. Now I build and run. And now you can see we have paging enabled. If I get a little halfway there, it snaps back. And if I get over halfway, it moves to the next view controller.